my name is Dan. Uh, you can find me over on Twitter or pretty much uh, any social media platform these days. I work at a small consulting company here in Denmark called Evobis, and I am a SharePoint consultant developer like we all are, uh, do a little bit of everything. Um, and uh, this demo came about, uh, actually sort of relevant with uh, Marcus's demo, because it's about what we can do to, to query data from SharePoint lists. So we all know that there's a, a REST endpoint in SharePoint and there's Camel Query. But there are some things that you can do with Camel Query that you can't do with, with REST and so on. And uh, I was trying to make a, like showcase some way to, to demo this. Uh, so I built a quick web part uh, that I'll just demo real quick here, where essentially what you do is you just take any list uh, and you can write some Camel Query and you can execute it. And we're actually just using the PNP reusable controls down here to just map out every field of the item. Uh, so there you go, you can add some data and you can use uh, the other sample just to interact with that data if you need to. And then I built in a couple of uh, custom queries just for, for like the demo here of some of the things we can do with Camel that we couldn't do with the REST endpoint. Uh, one of those would be querying things based on SharePoint groups. So if we have a small list here of some uh, some tasks that are going to be done, uh, these should obviously not be in here, they should be in planner or to do, but uh, say you put them in SharePoint. We can use SharePoint groups uh, and query based on whether the user is added to one of these groups or not. So say I'm added um, to the IT department group, we can query, give me all the onboarding tasks for groups that I'm in. Uh, this is done using the membership thing and we can just click execute. And there we go, I will get all the tasks that are assigned to the IT department. And of course you can extend this the same way you could with anything else. Uh, you could do it with several queries. So you could go ahead and say all the tasks that aren't done. There you go. Uh, and one thing that you can do with Camel Query that I haven't found a way. So please, if somebody knows in the chat, go ahead. A way to query a URL field by the actual URL and not the title of the thing. I haven't found a good way to do that in uh, in the rest endpoints. Okay, so that's it for the, the demo of the actual like tool. And just a quick note, you can actually uh, grab the query part of your view or your your camel query and use that as a view for SharePoint lists. This will obviously break uh, in case somebody actually edits the view, but sometimes you want to do a, a list where you go ahead and say onboarding tasks, and you can go ahead and you can say my pending tasks. And there you go. It's again filtered based on the IT department. This is a great way to, to do something where we're using custom code because we're using the PNP partial to set it. And there's no way to do this with the UI, uh, but it's really fast. As for the code, well, I didn't want to focus too much on the list view thing because we I knew Marcus was doing the demo just before me. So one thing that I actually f thought I would highlight uh, is the uh, it was, if we're building functional components, we get this thing called the, the React context, which is really awesome. We had it in like class components too, but it's way more functional doing it in like modern functional components. So what we do is we create like our provider and then anywhere from there below in our code. So no matter how deep down you are in the component tree, you actually have the ability to, to like go ahead and, and grab those items as long as you're below that, which is really awesome um because it avoids the thing where we used to like pass the spfx context down all the way through all our components and you'd just be needlessly passing it around to to get it to like somewhere where a list picker needed it and then that's about it uh i noticed a few people in the chat asking during the thing about like a modern way to like do a camel query building and i just wanted to shout out there's a library called camel js um i I think I might actually have it installed in here. I don't. Uh, there, there's a great like Chrome extension too, and it actually makes it like fluently to write uh, Camel queries and translate them. And similarly, there's one called Camel EX for like C sharp code that actually works really well. And I, I would like to shout, shout both of those out because as someone who came into the like SharePoint universe not that long ago, writing Camel queries really sucks. Uh, they, they're, they're great for what they can do, but like. Writing them by by hand is a lot of work, uh, and it's one of those things where I end up always missing like a small tag. 
Yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, there's a link to the sample, uh, a link to the documentation on camel queries, and a quick link to the reusable controls. Yeah, I saw see Paul all find it in the on the Chrome thing. That's it, it's like the best thing if you don't like writing camel queries. So what what I always end up doing is I teach new new hires to write a camel query, and then we go ahead and write it with that thing. And it's way faster, way easier. And that's it for my demo. Thank you, Dan. Yet another great demo. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen. And now that we are talking about uh, building uh, camel queries and uh, uh, working with camel, I saw in the chat a few people mentioning the old good days and the camel builder and all that kind of stuff that we used to use in the past. And uh, this, this is totally not planned to be in this uh, call, but I think it is not a problem. Actually, it is an opportunity. Uh, let me share that in the PMP organization, we have the whole source code of the Camel Builder, the one of the old uh, good old days, uh, thanks to Karim Bosch, who decided to share the whole source code uh, with the community. We have this repository. I'm not sure that we already shared this information uh, or not, but now I'm sharing it. And we are also looking for people in the community willing to renew this tool and maybe make it like a new modern web part or something like that. So here you find the whole source code, give it an eye if you want. You can download and use it as like as you used to do in the past, but you can also start modernizing it if you like. And we now, as the community, Paolo, we will be more than happy to do that. Yes, Lisa. Yeah. Uh, I will ask a few questions about this. Can you first explain what is camel for those who don't that this might be a completely new term for half oh. of the people in this call? We're somehow magically assuming that people know what is camel. That's now not you're making me feel really case. old. <laughs> 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 but you are totally right. Totally right. Camel. Uh, are, actually, I don't recall anymore what the acronym is, but camel is the acronym of a language that you can use uh, to build queries in uh, uh, SharePoint uh, lists and libraries. So it is the language, XML based language that we used to use in the past, at least uh, to write uh, the structure of views and queries while working with uh, SharePoint and uh, uh, developing SharePoint solutions. Nowadays, we don't use it very often, even if every now and then we still use a camel. Maybe we don't know that it is camel, but we use it to filter. For example, when you create a, a custom view and you export a view with uh, uh, the PMP provisioning engine, in the content of the provisioning template, there will be the XML of the camel defining the filter. And it was collaborative application markup language. Thank you, Vesa. Uh, so uh, that's the basic idea of uh, camel. It was really fundamental in the past. It is kind of well hidden nowadays, but still completely there, correct? me if I'm wrong, Visa. Uh, and yes, it's still yeah. behind after scenes uh, in good and bad, so to say. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> precisely. And so the Camel Builder was a desktop, Windows desktop application to design, graphically design the uh, Camel queries rather than writing uh, them, them manually and in XML syntax. It was really cool and useful because it was uh, able to give you a preview of the results of the query, and then you were able to copy and paste the Camel query into your actual uh, uh, code. Um, of course, a desktop version and specifically a desktop version for Windows is not necessarily really useful nowadays, but a renewed version, which will be cross-platform and eventually with a web UI, I think uh, would be really, really useful and interesting. And as you can see from the uh, structure of this repository, you can already see that there are multiple layers. So you can eventually think about rebuilding the UI, uh, trying to keep the backend infrastructure still uh, uh, as it is. But this is just a, a random idea. So now I now, just wanted to share bias, this. Yes. How biased you are for saying that Camel is awesome because it was XML. I'm just watching the chat uh, where you apparently have books <laughs> related on XML and all of that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I have to share that and then I, I will move eventually to a Q&A. There is a, a very good friend of mine who told me many years ago, Paolo, you love XML. XML sooner or later will disappear and will be well hidden under the cover of everything, but nobody will see it. Well, my friend was right, but I was right too, because XML is actually under the cover of many of the technologies that we use nowadays. So that's why I loved and I still love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry for this short personal story.